I've been seeing a shift in my audiences from mature people, people who are working in the companies to more youngsters are taking a look at my videos and joining my courses. And all of these people have one persistent question. How do I find real-time projects to do in Power BI? In this video, I'm gonna talk about that. How do you find high quality, extremely practical, real-time projects in Power BI that are going to set you apart from the competition? Let's go. All right, right at the start, I'm gonna divide this video into four parts. Part one is going to be about where to look for the projects in real life. Part number two is going to be about how to ask for the project. Part number three is going to be about how to actually do that project. And part four is going to be about how do you then present that project to the employer. All right, part number one, where to look for the project. Now, generally speaking, people follow a very conventional path to looking for the projects to do on Power BI. They are generally going to go on the web, try to go on some site that is where they will find some data and then they will kind of build a model and present it to, to the employer. That is not what I will recommend you. This is not a real life experience of doing a project. I would, however, suggest a very unconventional approach. And I'll recommend you that you look for data-driven, consumer-facing businesses around you in your area that you live, in the place that you work, or wherever you're going to the college, or whatever you're doing, look for consumer-driven, data-driven businesses. Now, let me give you four examples of such businesses. One is going to be, let's say, a gym business. Now, think about it. In a gym business, people would have to come in, people will have to register, they will have to then come in to do the workout, which is going to you know, mark their attendance data, and all of all of that. And a gym business is a classic example of a consumer driven business. The next example could be a restaurant business where people are coming in every single day ordering food. The restaurant is then collecting the data of all the orders that happened in that particular day. The next example could be a grocery business or a small grocery chain, which is where Hundreds of probably thousands of people are coming every single day to the grocery store, picking up items from the aisles, putting them in their baskets and getting them billed. That is a very, very good example of a consumer driven business. Another good example could be a school type of a business where students are coming in, you have attendance data, you have the registration data, you have the fee data, all of that also accounts for a consumer driven business. Now, once you take a look at all of these businesses which are collecting the data and are consumer driven, the second thing that you have to take a look at in these businesses is that their readiness with the data. Now, what do I mean by that? If, for example, you are taking a look at a nearby gym, you have to also take a look at the readiness of the data that is there in the gym. If there is no attendance being tracked in the gym electronically, or let's say the gym doesn't even provide any receipt or any electronic mode of payment through which all the data is being captured, then that particular business is not ready with the data. So you have to take a look at readiness of the data for all of these consumer facing businesses. If you translate the same thing to a restaurant example, if you don't really have a printed copy of the bill and the person sitting on the counter is not inputting all the data in some kind of system and capturing all the sales that happened, then there is no place where the data is being captured as of now. One of the problems that you would not be able to solve for these businesses is readiness for the data. Unless these businesses already have data readiness, that means whatever sales that they are making, consumers that are walking in, if they're already collecting the data for all of these transactions or things happening in the business, that means that that business is ready with the data. The thing that they don't have it as of now is the analysis of that data, which you're going to help them do, but you can't help the business with the readiness of the data unless you start to get into architectures and setting up the databases and all of that kind of stuff. Since we are talking about Power BI, the one of the prerequisite that I will encourage you to find as a student is look for consumer driven businesses and also look for readiness of the data. If you're enjoying the video so far, I have got some brilliant courses on Power BI, especially the hard parts on Power BI. Tax, data modeling, Power Query, and the M language are the core engines through which the model is built and the model works at the back. If you would like to learn these fundamentals right from scratch and then build up your understanding so that you're able to solve harder, more difficult problems, even of your own data, I would highly encourage that you take a look at my courses. You are just going to love them. Hundreds of students have joined my courses. The link is down in the description of the video. Part number two, how do you then ask for the project once you have identified the business, which is a consumer driven business and has the readiness with the data? The very first thing that I will recommend you do is to find the stakeholder, the owner of the business or the decision maker of the business. You have to find that person to talk to and you have to then pitch the offer in such a way that it almost becomes stupid to say no to such a nice offer. Now, as a pitch, 
pitch to the business. What exactly are you going to say to the business if you want to have that project to do in Power BI? An example of a poor pitch is going to be something like this. Hey, I'm a student and I would like to do some project for your business, which is where I'll make a nice dashboard for you and then you can take a look at your data. This is a very, very poor pitch. There are chances that the person who's owning a local business around you, sizable enough that they're collecting data, but doesn't have any analysis, probably doesn't even know what is the meaning of a report or a dashboard or doesn't even care about what is Power BI and why should I even care about having that being seen in Power BI. So as a pitch, you can't promise them a dashboard. You have to promise them on the other side a solution to the problem. And to be able to solve that problem, you would need to analyze the data for them. So instead of promising them a dashboard, which they are probably not interested in, you're going to promise them a solution to a problem that they might be facing and the solution might need you to build a dashboard. Let me give you an example in the case of a gym business. So let's say you go to a gym and the gym is collecting the data for all the attendance being tracked for all the people who are coming into the gym and doing the workout. Now you could offer them a proposal where you will take a look at their data and you will increase the average lifetime value of the consumer by just taking a look at the attendance. How? You can make an hypothesis that if people come to the gym every single day, they are more likely to renew their membership when the membership ends. And in case that is not true, if people are not really coming to the gym every single day and they don't really have consistent attendance to the gym, you might want to follow up with those customers and ask them to come regularly to the gym that it is likely that they kind of renew their attendance. Now, to be able to do that, you obviously would need to analyze the attendance data and find out those people who are not really coming to the gym every single day. So you have a very, very specific problem that you're trying to fight for and what you're offering to the end consumer is not really a dashboard to take a look at and make sense of the data by themselves, but you're offering a very, very precise proposal or a solution to the problem which the gym owner might be interested in solving. Another example could be the restaurant example, where you take a look at all the dishes that the restaurant is offering and you can help them optimize the dishes and cut down the cost by reducing or pruning off the dishes which are not doing that well. Take a look at the, all the dishes which are selling and perform a very simple Pareto analysis that what are the 20-25% of the dishes which are generating 80-90, maybe 95% of the revenue. And all the dishes that are not, you can ask the person to print off by showing them how the data looks like. So you're again offering a very, very precise solution to the problem and not just a fancy dashboard. In case of a local school, now school is one such example which is where the school already has a management, they have teachers, they have accountants. So I'm assuming that the school is going to be slightly more sophisticated in kind of working with the data. In that scenario, you can still build a dashboard for the school to automate all of their processes. You can promise them an automated dashboard, which is where they can take a look at all the data at one single place, be it the attendance data of the students, the fee data of the students, or the calendar events of the school. All of that, if automated, brings into a single place, that's going to be a very high value proposition for the school as well. In short, you have to offer a solution and not offer the dashboard. That is going to be your pitch. After you've made a very attractive pitch and offered a solution to the problem, the next obvious question the business owner is going to ask you that why are you doing this for me? Now, this is where I would suggest you that you be absolutely honest. You can tell them that you are a student and you're trying to learn this technology of data analysis and you've gained a lot of experience and you want to use that in the practical setting and you would rather do it on a practical case on a real business. This is absolutely going to be free for them. Don't charge them a dime. But the one thing that you would want to ask for in exchange of the work that they do is a testimonial that you'll be able to present the work that you have done for those people, maybe mask it as well, and then show it in your resume resume or someplace else for the employer to take a look at. And in case any references are being taken and if they are happy with the work, they should give you a good word of mouth. Part number three, how to actually do the project. I'm assuming that at this stage you've got the project, the client is ready to give the project to you. Then how do you actually do that project? Now there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. The first one is what do you need exactly from the client side to be able to do the project? That is something that you should make it very, very explicit and very, very clear to the client. Note that there is no skin in the game for the client. The client is not invested any single money for in the project. So there are three things that you need to communicate explicitly very, very well to the client. 
Number one, what is the exact data that you need from the client to be able to do this project? Number two, ask for very specific time commitment on a regular basis. This could be, let's say, every single day. If every single day is not possible, then this could be every single week maybe twice a week, whatever time commitment that you need from the client, it should not happen that you're doing the project, at the end of the month, you come to the client and show them something and they don't even like it. So you have to have time commitment from the project for them to have skin in the game. They are consistently taking a look at the project that is being done and giving you feedback on improving the output that is being produced. And finally, you should also communicate what exactly are you going to produce and how long is it going to take? All of this is what you would need from the client side. Now, what happens when the project comes to you and you've gotten everything from the client, how do you commit the things from your side into the project? Number one, do everything in your power to solve the problem for the client. Now that you have a problem statement, you can actually go back, take a look at the data and figure out how do you solve the problem. Now this could be either struggling yourself and figuring the problem out, or you could also take help from other people to come to a solution to that problem. But do everything in your power to really solve the problem for the client. Part number two, and even more important, please, please document every single step in the way. Now documentation could relate to client expectations. What did you promise to the client? What is the core objective of the project? What are you trying to achieve? What problem are you trying to solve? How are you solving the problems? What approaches are you taking? Which approaches are working? Which approaches are not working? All of that, if you create a document, it is going to be a very, very good resource to show it to the employer once you actually reach that stage. So document every single detail. And finally, I'm assuming that by this stage, if you have come to a close solution to the client, now it's the time to hand over the project to the client. And there are two things that I will recommend to you. Number one, your solution to the client should be ridiculously easy to use. So do all that you have in your power to make the solution as easy as possible for the client to implement, use and maintain on a daily basis. And number two, this could also mean some sort of coaching or some sort of video that you might want to create for the client so that they can refer to that coaching, refer to that video in case they get stuck once you're gone. Part number four, at this stage, I'm assuming that you've understood where to look for in the business. You probably would have also gotten the project. You did a good pitch and you also got to work on the project and possibly even got to the solution and handed over the solution to the client. With all of the work that you have put in, we come to the final stage, which is where now, how do we take all of the work that we have done and present it to the prospective employer? At this stage, rather than just mentioning the project that you have done or just snapshotting the visuals that you have prepared or the analysis that you have done, it's very, very important to lay down the entire journey that you have taken to talk about how did you get the project? How did you zero down on the business? Which business did you pick? Why did you pick up that business? What pitch did you give? What was your offer? Why did you not offer to present the dashboard? And why did you offer to solve a problem for the client instead? What steps did you take to solve the problem? Mention all of that and even the handover part, mention all of that as in an extra or in the part of the resume or in a notepad or someplace or the other, but mention all of the work that you have done to get to the conclusion of the project. Now, how does all of the work that you have done make you stand out from a regular person who has just picked up some random data from the internet and built off a dashboard from there? Number one, your understanding of the real time data is going to be far, far, far better than a person who has just picked up some mocked up data from the internet and just built a dashboard. In this process, you've also understood the client psychology because client is not really looking for a dashboard. He's actually looking for solving a business problem. And that's exactly what the businesses would also ask you to do, not just write DAX formulas or Power Query formulas in order to get to the visual. They're actually wanting the data to solve a business problem rather than just creating fancy dashboard. And that's the psychology that you have understood through this project. There are also subtle things that you have gained in this entire process. Like you've clearly shown the skills, the soft skills to ask for the data, to go talk to the client, how to present the solution, how to hand over the solutions. These skills are super, super, super valuable when it comes to getting a job as a data analyst. I understand. This is a very, very long process as compared to just picking up some random data off the internet and then building a dashboard. But if you were to do this, one project, one single project that you would have done end to end is going to set you apart way ahead as compared to any other candidate applying in your position. I wish you all the best.